Hey, this is Brad Tipton, and I'm your host today, and I will be talking with you today to help you discover the four shifts my clients use to save their marriages without having to go to long-term couples counseling. My big promise to you today is I'm going to show you how to save your marriage without long-term couples counseling, which you've probably already heard doesn't work anyway, even if your wife doesn't think the marriage is salvageable. Now, who is this webinar, who is this training for that we're doing today? This is for Christian men who are on the brink of separation or divorce and you don't want to go into couples counseling or you've already tried it, couples counseling, and it just didn't work for you. So in the next 30 minutes, you'll know uh, how to save your marriage by wiping out the losing strategies that strangle every bad relationship, even if you're both exhausted and at the end of your rope. I'm going to help you to understand how you can pull your relationship back from the brink of divorce, even if it feels like it's too late. In the next 30 minutes, you're going to know how to save your marriage from the heartache of divorce. You're going to understand how to break this vicious cycle that happens between two people whenever they are um, in that same old repetitive fight. And more importantly, how to finally break out of that self-defeating pattern of behavior. Right. So does this sound familiar? Do you feel like you're running out of hope? Maybe you've been in couples therapy for a while and things feel better for a time or on a superficial level, but the resentment and the hurt just keep seeping right back through. Or maybe there's been an affair or an addiction or drink or drugs or porn or gambling or whatever, and you can't, you just can't take it anymore. After all, why should you? Are you in a situation where the sex, the intimacy and connection are distant memories? And to be honest, you're not even sure if you want that anymore anyway. Or maybe you're just scared that you might have married the wrong person and that you'll never be loved. You know, perhaps you know that things have to change or it's only a matter of time before you walk out the door or she does. Right. Maybe you find yourself justifying why you're staying because you feel guilty because both of you knew. Right. They say you knew who I was at the beginning. Do you find yourself saying I made my bed? I guess now I got to lie in it. Right. Does this sound familiar? Do you feel like you have the same old argument over and over again? Feeling so mad that it leaves you with nowhere to go except the spare room or the couch? Or do you feel like sometimes your wife is so impossible, there's so much skepticism and mistrust, right? That she's selfish or self-protective or mistrustful, or hopeless. Like there's a like this, there's huge gulf between you two, right? Well, I want you to know those things that I just mentioned, while they are kind of like fruit, they're not the root. They're not the real problem. Right. The real problem is you just haven't learned or embedded or implemented the four shifts that I'm going to tell you about today. Right. And by the end of this talk, you'll know the importance of understanding the four shifts. Right. Unlocking the toxic interactions between you and your wife that are destroying your marriage. Right. Learning and implementing the correct strategies for a thriving marriage in the 21st century. Right getting the correct roadmap to design your compelling future. And number four, how to implement and embed these crucial new changes that I want to be sharing with you about. Okay, so this is really powerful, and I know you're going to have a great time, but but before I move any further so I'm not rude, let me tell you a little bit about who I am, right? My name is Brad Tipton. I'm the author of of the book series and the training series called Bounce Back. Right. And it's a powerful series because that's a book that I wrote a couple of years ago and it's called Bounce Back, How to Turn Failures and Mistakes into Stepping Stones for Success. And so I'm the author of that training series and book. And a little bit more about me. I'm a former pastor from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And for the first two years of marriage with my wife, Gail, those years were great. Right. Amazing years. But however, for the next 12 years, Due to the pressures of ministry, due to the pressures of money, right? Due to the pressures uh, and the challenge that are just part of being marriage. Due to those treasure, uh, those pressures, we struggled. Man, we struggled. Sadly, we separated. The church was dissolved, and ultimately, 
Gail and I divorced and went our separate ways. Gail moved to Iowa, and I stayed in Milwaukee alone and embarrassed and too ashamed to face my friends, or they were really my former friends, because once the divorce came, and even during the separation, they kind of had to align with, are they Gail's friends? Are they my friends? And if they're Gail's friends, they have to be against me and say things negative about me, right? It was just horrible. They had to choose sides. And that kind of thing went on even after the divorce. That went on until one day I joined a new church and my pastor, who during this time had become my mentor, gave me the four shifts, right? And these four shifts that he gave me, it transformed my perspective, right? It brought me and Gail back together and it actually resurrected our marriage. So that's amazing that our marriage actually got resurrected. Today, Gail and I are remarried. And we're, we're enjoying a happy, growing, prospering, and fulfilling marriage. We've moved from the Midwest to sunny California where we're now living our happily ever after in the beautiful wine country. It's amazing the power of the four shifts that I'll be sharing with you today. But before you walk out of your marriage, right, before you walk out of the door, I just want to encourage you, just stop for a moment. Just push back for a minute, a minute and just think, right? Think about the four shifts that I'm about to share with you right now. So before we start talking directly about the four shifts, let's address what we call the elephant in the room, right? Couples counseling, right? Which I refer to as MGD counseling. It's where marriages go to die. Marriages go to die counseling. And you go, well, Brad, why would you say that? Well, it's not really what I say. There's an article from May 16th in the Huffington Post, and I don't like to read you a whole bunch of stuff, but check this out. The Huffington Post says there's a good reason most marriages, marriage counseling doesn't work because couples therapy may be the hardest form of therapy and most therapists aren't good at it. According to an article by William Doherty in the professional journal Psychology New uh, Networker, Surveys indicate that about 80% of therapists in private practice do couples therapy. Where they get their training is a mystery because most therapists practicing today never took a course in couples therapy and never did their internships under supervision from someone who mastered the art of couples, uh, couples therapy, right? From a consumer's point of view, according to the Huffington Post, from a consumer's point of view, going in for couples therapy is like having your broken leg set by a doctor who skipped orthopedics in medical school, said Doherty. According to the New York Times, two years after ending marital counseling, 25% of couples are worse off than they were when they started. And after four years of marital counseling, 38% are divorced. Whoa. Whoa. So that's a pretty scathing article, but it's real. There's a good reason most marriage counseling doesn't work. And all I would say is that there's there's an old way of doing marital counseling. There's a new way of doing marital counseling. And the old way is these therapists are kind of generalists, right? They kind of the, the person that they see before you may have a personal issue, some sort of a childhood issue or the case is. Right. And then they see the next person who has some sort of a psychological issue and then they bring you in for your marriage. Right. They're kind of like generalists. But it's important that you know that this is what I do. I'm a specialist. I help struggling Christian men bring their marriages back from the brink of divorce. That's all I do. Right. These therapists, they're, they work on the symptoms. Right. Over and over and over, week after week, month after month. But my focus is let's get the results, right? A lot of times marriage couples counseling happens at the wrong time of day, right? Either you've worked all day and you're tired and now you got to rehash all this stuff, right? At your, at, when you're at your worst after you've given all your energy away. Or let's say you go in early in the day and you have to take time off work and miss money. So now your mind is like kind of on couples counseling, but you're kind of like, well, we still got bills and I'm missing money, right? It's the wrong time of the day. But the way that I work with my clients, we provide the training 
and the coaching in such a way that it's always the perfect time. A lot of times when you do marriage counseling, they, they say this over 80% of the time, there's one of the, of the, of in the couple who's going to the couple's counseling against their will. They don't want to go, right? They're just like, okay, I'll, I'll play this game. I'll go to this stuff if you want me to, right? It's against their will. But the way that this new way of doing it is where you're engaged 100%, right? With this couple's therapy, the goals of the therapy are not always clear. But the way that the new way of doing it thinks, the way that I work with clients, with my clients at least, we have 100% clarity, right? I'm always asking you, what is your vision? What are the obstacles to achieving the visual? And, and let's put some, a path and plan in place to achieve that thing, to achieve your vision. We got to get clarity about this before we move forward, right? A lot of times therapy is about organized fighting. You sit there and you go back over your fight and they kind of referee the whole thing, right? Organized fighting. Well, when we talk about your vision, some of the obstacles to the vision and providing you with a path and a plan for achieving your vision, we're talking about organized fixing of your marriage, organized saving of your marriage, not organized fighting, right? The other thing about the old way is you're sitting there, especially guys, you're sitting there and sharing like your most important things with the total stranger. Give me a break. You're not going to open up. And anyway, guys don't even work like that. Men are more open when they're kind of doing something, right? When they're walking, when they're driving, when they're moving, right? That type of thing. When we're there we're, we're doing something, that's when we're more engaged rather than sitting there and feeling our emotions and talking about. That's not the way to engage and get results for the guy in the, in, in the uh, relationship. So I just want you to know there's an old way, there's a new way, and we're talking about the brand new way, right? And so here's what I will also say. I know you may be feeling like, you know what, in your marriage, I'm out of here, right? Maybe I just need a new city, a new plan, a new situation, right? But here, here's the reality. The grass isn't greener on the other side. The grass is only greener where you water it, where you take the time and put in the time. Like if you have a neighbor whose lawn looks fabulous, it's not his lawn does look fabulous by accident, right? His lawn isn't fabulous because he moved from around the corner. Now he's in this cool house. It's because he's investing the time and energy and effort in having that amazing lawn. The grass isn't greener on the other side. The grass is greener where you water it. Now, I wasn't planning on sharing this, but I couldn't leave it out because it would be completely, I mean, I wouldn't be completely honest if I did. I'm obviously talking with Christian men, right? And the Old, the New Testament is written in the Greek, but the Old Testament is written in the Hebrew, and the Hebrew word for tears. And I want you to know that in our relationship, sometimes we're hurting each other, right? With our words, with our actions, she's hurting you, you're hurting her. But in the Hebrew, the word dama is the word for tears. And the word dama, it means the blood of the eye or the blood of the soul. And you get this. Like if somebody cuts you accidentally, for instance, on your skin, your skin would bleed because there's a wound there. Well, what happens in relationships is we hurt each other. With our sharp words, we hurt each other with the way that we act, the way that we do. And when we're crying, it's our soul that's bleeding because we've been cut inside. And while a wound on the outside can heal up after a week or two, a day or two, whatever, it takes time for those wounds on the inside to heal. And the reality is that you just have to come to a point where you're saying, Lord, look, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to do it to somebody else, and I don't want to do it, anybody doing it to me. And that's what this is all about with, with us talking today. So let's talk about the four crucial shifts to avoid divorce and save your marriage. Shift number one is, is what I call the reveal, where you just got to get clear. Strip away everything and get clear about some things. Shift number two is where you got to re reevaluate. This is not your granddaddy's 
marriage or your parents' marriage. This is a brand new 21st century marriage, and you got to walk out things the way things are today. You got to redefine shift number three. You have to create a compelling future, right? Where there's, the Bible says where there's no vision, the people perish. And a lot of times we're perishing in our relationship because we don't even have the time to look up and look down the road, right? Shift number four is we got to reimagine. We got to begin to embed and implement the crucial changes and shifts that I'm talking about today. So let's talk about shift number one, just getting clarity, right? You said, well, Brad, getting clarity about what? The first shift, if you got to get clarity, about where are you in this relationship, right? Are, are you in, mostly in, or are you mostly out of the relationship, right? You have to decide that as the man. Look, are you in this thing or are you out of this thing? Let's not play games. Let's not stay in the middle where one day you're in, one day you're out. See, I, I learned from my mentor a long time ago, right, that you got to be either hot or cold. Because if you're in the middle, nobody can do anything to help you. So you got to get a lot of clarity about where are you. So the question today for you, are you committed to your marriage, to your family, to your legacy, or not? Right? Are you going to offer me some sort of an excuse about what she's not doing or this or that and the other? But my mentor told me, he said, look, Brad, an excuse is nothing but the crutch of the uncommitted. The excuse is nothing more than the crutch of the uncommitted to relieve yourself of, a, of, of an obligation, a responsibility, or a commitment. He told me, he said, look, you can, you can either show up for your own marriage and show up, or you can give excuses. But an excuse is nothing more than the crutch of the un uncommitted to relieve yourself of an obligation, a responsibility, or commitment. I am encouraging you today, step up, show up, because I'm here to show up for you. Show up for your life, show up for your marriage, show up for your children, show up for your grandchildren, your legacy. You got to decide today, are you going to offer up excuses or are you committed? Also, in the shift number one, you got to get clarity about, I call it, call it studying the fight. What's this repetitive pattern that shows up when you guys either fight or avoid fighting, right? What is the pattern that's showing up? Let's get clear about that. Let's come up with a path and a plan to overcome that so that you can get the result that you want. Number three, you got to get clarity about the problem in solvable terms and move toward a solution, right? One of the things that I love about my wife is she's a consultant. She travels the country and she goes into different uh, healthcare organizations and, and she's a problem solver for them, right? And her question is always, what will it look like for you? They say, we got, you got to fix this thing for us. Gail, we're in trouble. We're bleeding money, right? She's like, what would it look like for you if everything was back on track and working properly, right? We got to define this thing in solvable terms and then move toward the solution for you. What would it look like? You say, I want you to help me save my marriage. Well, what would that look like? We got to get clarity about that. And I can walk you through that and help you with that. Right. But here's a lot of the problem. Right. A lot of it is pride, arrogance, ego. A lot of times when it comes to relationships, all you got to do is apologize. Apologizing doesn't always mean you're wrong. And the other person is right. It just means that you value the relationship more than your ego, more than your pride, more than wanting to be right. Apologizing doesn't always mean that you're wrong and that the other person is always right. It just means that you value the relationship. You're like, look, this is not a deal breaker here. I'm not going to lose my relationship over this. I'm sorry, baby. And it's not even I'm sorry, baby, about what you did or the thing or the whatever you're talking about a lot of times is baby i'm so sorry that i hurt your feelings i'm sorry that i made you feel small i'm sorry that i made you feel insignificant i'm sorry that i made you feel like you weren't heard or appreciated see a lot of times it's not even about the thing you're arguing about it's about how she made you feel or you made her feel and when you apologize apologize around the feeling you win Right. That's shift number one. Let's talk about shift number two, where it's time for you to really evaluate and understand that the marriage that you and your wife have today 
is a 21st century marriage, right? It's not the marriage your parents had. It's not the kind of marriage or even a time when your grandparents lived. You got to really understand that you got a 21st century marriage and things happen differently. You got to just really get on board with that and begin to work those things through, right? You got to learn how to meet each other's needs, right? You got to get clear about re uh, redefining your roles, and you really have to upgrade what I call your marriage operating system. Let's talk about the um, meeting each other's needs, right? And a lot of times for your wife, she needs certainty, right? Are you going to take care of things? Are you going to be here for me for real? Certainty. But she also needs variety. And you do too. You don't want to be doing the same old thing every Friday night. This is boring, right? We used to have a vibrant relationship. Now we're just bored. So you need variety, significance, right? You used to do stuff to let her know that, look, you are the one for me. Here's this gift or here's this thing I was thinking. Here's this plant. Here's this picture, right? Where she felt like significance or where she operated in such a way that you felt significance. We have to make sure in the relationship that we're doing those things in operating a way that each of you feel like there's a level of significance, right? Above the children, above money, above whatever, that you love her and she loves you and you guys love each other, right? Loving connection is another thing. Growth in the marriage, right? Just like anything, there got to be growth. Like if you have children, it's awesome when they're born, but if they're not walking by a certain time, you go, man, something's not right here. If they're not saying mama or dad, dad, by this certain daddy, by this time, or if they're not reading, or riding a tricycle, there's no growth, and that's a problem. Well, in the same way with marriage, you got to have growth. There has to be these milestones. You have to be growing in your relationship and your connection. And there also has to be contribution, right? What is this marriage about, right? What, what are we giving back to the world through our marriage? Like, you look at Bill and Melinda Gates, they're doing something for the world, right? And so what's happening is that there has to be a level of con contribution that comes out of the marriage. That's how 21st century marriages work. The other things you have to really def redefine your roles. See, back in the day, the guy made all the money, right? The wife would stay at home. The, you know, your grandmother, your mother, she might have stayed at home. Well, that may not be the situation in your house. Money earning, she could make the more money, right? Household responsibilities, dishes, like your dad probably never did dishes, didn't even know how to cook or iron, right? But for you, it may be a situation where there are times where you do have to do the dishes or the laundry, the ironing, cooking, feeding the baby, right? In the 21st century, a lot of times things that were typically the woman's role is sometimes a guy's role, right? And we got to really get clarity about this and feel cool with that. I don't want you to feel like you're doing something and you're like less of a man because you're, you know, doing some role that might in the past been traditionally a woman. Right. Love and physical intimacy is, so, and intimacy is so important. I know you're busy. I know you're tired, but you got to make the time for that. Right. And sometimes as a caretaker it, these days in the 21st century, sometimes there's an older parent or grandparent or family member. Who you guys are taking care of, there's, you got to provide caretaking for them. You got to decide who's going to do the ba the bathing of this adult person, who's going to change maybe the. The, the diaper if needed or feed or whatever that's needed. 21st century marriage is a completely different thing than the old school. You've got to redefine your roles clearly. And you got to upgrade your marriage operating system, right? So a lot of times with my computer, my laptop that I'm talking to you on right now, inconveniently, Microsoft will update everything and I have to shut down my computer right when I wanted it, right? But they need to do that because they need to upgrade the operating system to keep out spyware, malware, things that could tear up the computer, right? Well, in the very same way, it's so important for you right now to really get your brain around tossing out that old merit system, right? That system where if you, if you, you, if you do right, or if you act right, I love you. And, but if you don't act right or do what I want you to do or say what I want you to say or come when I want you to come or leave when I want you to leave, if you don't do or act or operate the way that I want you to, then I don't love you. But if you do everything I want you to do, oh, I love you, right? It's this merit-based system, performance-based system. And what I'm saying to you right now that that merit-based system and that performance-based, when it comes around love, that don't work. You got to upgrade to an unconditional love system in your marriage 
where you're like, I don't care what you do or don't do. I love you. I don't care how you act or don't act. When we lay down in this bed tonight, me and you, I'm not going to be on one side and you're going to be on the other side because you didn't do what I wanted you to do. Regardless, baby, of what you do or don't do, I love you. I have a not, my, my love for you is not performance based. It's not merit based. You can't earn my love or lose my love. I just love you. And so you have to upgrade from the merit system, right, to the unconditional love level. Shift number three is you got to really redefine and create a compelling future for your marriage, right? You got you to gotta begin to see your marriage as multi-generational, right? You got to see your marriage. Like I live in the wine country here in California, and we grow a lot of almonds and a lot of grapes for wine, right? We're the biggest almond producers in the world here in California and the biggest wine, uh, pr wine producers here, certainly in the, in, in, in the United States, right? But what's so interesting, let's talk about the almond trees in particular, what I find is those almond trees don't produce enough almonds sometimes for 10, 15, 20, 30 years down the road. So what's happening is there are men and women now planting the almond trees now so that their children and grandchildren down the road will be able to continue the family business down the road from what they planted today. They have a generational view. They're saying, I'm already seeing my children and grandchildren prospering and doing well because of what we planted today. And that's how you got to get about this third shift is about you really getting clear that the marriage that we have today is really about, yeah, it's about us, but it's about our children and grandchildren. We, won't, we don't want to create a cycle of divorce that perpetuates into our children's lives, a cycle of fighting and bickering and tearing each other up that perpetuates itself in our children and our grandchildren so that your grandchildren are dealing with junk that actually started with you that you got from your parents right you're saying look i got to we got to fix this stuff baby because we need it but we got children and grandchildren that we want to have an amazing future and we got to start planting the right things today you got to redefine the maturity and independence, interdependence that you have on each other. You just got to come to the point. See, when I was, when you were both, of us, when, we, when we were single, we could do things, right? We could handle everything. We got it, right? But when you get married, that single brain mindset, I got it, I can do it, I can make it without you mindset has to go. Clearly, there's things that she does that better that you don't know how to do as well. And clearly there's things that you do and you're superior to her. The reality is that you both need each other. And that's a level of growing up and maturing where you realize, man, I need this woman in my life. And where she realizes, I need this man in my life. He has stuff and brings stuff to the table that I don't bring. And she has stuff and brings stuff to the table that I don't bring. It's just a maturity about loving each other and truly becoming interdependent upon one another. And then the other thing is you got to learn how to cherish what you have. Right? Right? You got to define, have a, a if you're going to have an amazing future, you really got to begin to say, you know what? Lord, I thank you for my wife. Lord, I thank you for the blessing that she is in my life. Lord, I'm not coming to you about how she did or how she acted or what she did or what she didn't do. I'm not talking about a merit system. Lord, I'm thanking you for your goodness and your grace and your mercy. Father, show me what I can do for her today to make her know that I love her. You got to begin to learn how to cherish what you have. Shift number four is you really got to come to the point of reimagining your marriage, thinking about even this, 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 this challenge that you're having right now, you got to think about it in a completely different way. You got to embed and implement this crucial mindset that I'm about to talk to you about. You got to implement something new in the way that you are thinking right now. So I'm about to, I'm about to, I'm about to ask you a question. And when I ask you this question, it's going to revolutionize everything. 
right? You've been talking, we've been talking together for a few minutes now. Of the three shifts, this shift is the most vital shift. Because I know you're going through things. I know it's difficult. I know it's hard. I know it seems impossible. I know it's challenging. I know it's crazy. I went through it. I won too, right? I went through it and I won. I'm back. We've got a beautiful marriage, right? So I'm about to ask you a question. In the midst of the difficulty, in the midst of the challenge, in the midst of the trial, in the midst of the opposition, in the midst of the craziness, let me ask you this question. What if the challenges you are facing right now are happening for you instead of to you? What if the challenges you are facing right now are actually working? God is working something for your life to grow you, to mature you, to take you to the next level in your life. What if this thing is happening actually for you and not to you? I promise you. See, you're a Christian. You get it. You read the Bible. You understand how things go. And let me talk to you. I want you to understand that Jesus died on the cross, right? We get that. It was painful, right? We get that. Nobody understood. When he was born as a baby and when the disciples and he lived this perfect life, nobody thought that his end up was going to be on a cross, right? Lied on, trumped up charges, beat up, whipped, tore up, nailed on a cross to die and get in the ground for three days, right? Nobody thought that that was the plan because those are challenges. Those are difficulties. Those are obstacles. Those are things that are just ridiculous. But how many of you know that that was the plan for your victory? And if you're ever going to understand how God works, he will take the thing that's so challenging and use it for the better. So what if the challenges you're facing right now are actually not happening? Are, they are actually, actually happening for you and not to you? What if God is working something powerful in your life? What if he's looking to change you and grow you and mature you and give you a larger vision for your children, your grandchildren? What if he's looking to work out some humble and humility in you? What if he's looking to make you committed in a time where everybody would give up? What, is he, what if he's look, working some consistency in you, right? What if he's working some courage in you? What if he's working some dependence on him in you? What if he's working that? What if you took all the mess, all the difficulty, all the challenges that you're dealing with right now so far as your marriage, and what if you gave it all to God and asked him and said, Lord, use it. What if you said, Lord, use me. Father, take all this that's going on, all this craziness, just like it was crazy on the cross, Take and all the craziness that was there, you used it for your glory and for your beauty and for your benefit for us all. Father, take everything that's happening in my life, take everything that's happening in my marriage and work it, God. I give you my heart. I give you my life. Search me, Lord. Break me, Lord. And then send me, Lord. I want you to know what's happening. You are the benefit of beneficiary of my life. Me and Gail went through some difficult things. We talked about it earlier. But here I am now reaching out to you to save your marriage from the brink of divorce because I've been there and I know how to win. I know how to win and save your marriage. So he used all the garbage and that difficulty in my life to shape me, mold me, change me, grow me, mature me, get, get me a vision and gave me a want to to reach out to men just like you. Grab you at the edge of the cliff and pull you back from the brink of divorce. So many times Gail says to people, she says, man, I would never have believed it. But now me and Gail have the, me and Brad, she says, me and Brad have the marriage that I always knew we had. We just didn't know how to get there. And I want to do the same thing for you. I want you and I want your wife. I want your wife to say, imagine, reimagine is what this fourth shift is, right? Reimagine what would happen if you gave all this to God and said, God, use it for your glory. 
And what would success look like? It's when your wife said out of her own mouth, I never would have believed it. This is the most amazing marriage. I never would have believed it. I'm so happy. What if the challenges that you're facing right now are not happening, are, 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 are not happening to you, but happening for you? It's important for you to take, especially this fourth pill, this fourth um, shift, implement it and embed this into your life, into your mind and your thought and say, Lord, search me, break me, use me, send me, use all this for your glory. Help me. I need you. Implement this crucial change, but implement it with the work and help of the right relationship coach. I'm a coach, right? But, the, but I don't know if you need a coach. The simplest way to make a decision about if you need a coach is to simply ask yourself these two questions. The first question is, ask yourself, so far of all the things I've tried to save my marriage, am I any closer to having a stable, happy, growing, and prospering marriage? So far of all the things I've tried to save my marriage, am I any closer to having a stable, happy, growing, and prospering marriage? Second, ask yourself, for the time, the headache, and the heartache I've invested so far, am I even one step closer? Am I even one step closer to the spiritually connected, physically fulfilling, and emotionally healthy marriage that I truly want? After all the time, headache, heartache, am I, in, am I any closer? And if you don't like the answer to the questions that I just asked you, you got your answer. You need somebody to help. You need a coach. Because in this day and age, simply knowing what to do is not nearly enough. You can go on Google and search, what do I do to save my marriage? And you'll get, I, honest, I kid you not, you'll probably get six million different, you'll get six million response, right, responses back. Tell you all what to do, PDFs, YouTubes. Right. But in this day of age, simply knowing what to do is not enough. You need to know how to do it. You need somebody who can answer your questions. You need somebody to be accountable to. Right. So here's where you are right now. You're at a crossroads where you've seen these shifts. You've heard my passion. You know, man, this Brad, this guy, he's on fire. He can help me. And I can. So you're at a place in your life right now where you can do nothing, right? You've heard all this stuff right now that I've shared. You can do nothing. You can keep doing what you've always done, expecting somehow a different outcome. But come on. Are you really going to get a different outcome doing the same thing? You can also try to change things on your own. What, for another 10 years? Or you can get a coach to show you the way. And I want you to know my team and I have set aside some time in the next 48 hours to speak to you personally about how you can apply these four shifts to save your marriage. And whatever your biggest challenges are, trust me, with the men we've worked with, we've seen it. I've seen it. And I know exactly what to do to overcome it. I've been there. And I've won. Right. It's I'm like a tour guide, like in the jungle that's that's been there. Right. And I know all the twists. I know all the turns. I know all the places to look out for. I know all the jagged rocks. I know how to keep you safe. I won. And I encourage you schedule some time to talk with me and on the session that we talk on the phone, we'll work with you to craft a step by step game plan to save your marriage without some sort of long, drawn-out counseling session that you know don't, they don't work anyway. Because all they do in these counseling sessions, they bring up the past, and they end up blaming the husband for everything. Right? My goal is for you to begin waking up every morning in a stable, happy, growing, prospering, and fulfilling marriage. So I'd love it if you would Schedule a time to talk with me by phone. And someone would say, well, Brad, what's the cost to talk to you by phone? What's the cost, right? It's free. 100% free.
And some would say, well, it's free. What's the catch? And there must be a catch. You may be saying, Brad, hey, nothing in life is free. What's the catch here? What, what's the deal here? But there is no catch. It really is free. 100% free. And some would say, well, why are you doing it then, Brad, if it's free? Why are you even doing it? If it's so free, why are you doing it? Well, here's why I'm doing it. Because after we talk for about 60 minutes by the phone, and we talk through kind of a solid plan of how to save your marriage, you may say to me, man, Brad, that sounds good. Will you help me with this? And that happens. People ask me for help. And if that's the case, great. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about how I can help. But let me be clear about who, when thinking about calling me and having this conversation with me, let's talk clearly about who this is not for, right? Calling me and talking with me is not a good fit if your wife has already left the marriage and is resolute to never come back. It's not a good fit to call me and talk with me if your wife is actively involved with somebody else, another man. If your wife is suffering from some sort of acute, untreated addiction or some sort of a personality disorder, if she's an abuser or a narcissist. No, I'm not a doctor like that. She needs some kind of clinical help. So this call is not for that. But this call is a good fit for those who know they have invested too much time. They've invested too much energy, headache, heartache. And of all the time you've invested, you're still not even one step closer to saving your marriage. This call is for men who are not looking to offer up some sort of an excuse, but are truly committed to their wife, truly committed to their family, truly committed to their children and their children's children, committed to God. This call is for a man who understands and believes that the God who overcame the cross, the brutality of the cross, and on the other side of it was raised from the dead, he believes that that same God is able to fix and repair and restore and resurrect and save his marriage. If you believe that that God is powerful enough to overcome the cross and win, that that same God is powerful enough to help you and resurrect your marriage and bring it back from the brink of divorce and save that marriage. And if that's the case, and yeah, if you believe that, then this call is for you. So if you know you need coaching from somebody who has and is currently walking the talk, someone who has been down the very same path that you're currently in and has successfully overcome the very same thing you're dealing with, right? If you know you need a coach and you want to deal with somebody who's been where you are and has won, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take action. Right? And so what I'm going to do is um, try to make a button appear on the screen for you so that you can click the button. And once you click that button, you can um, see my, my calendar. And on my calendar, you'll see dates and times. And you can click and schedule a time to talk with me. And I encourage you to do that right now while you're thinking about it. And I know there's a lot of people on this and watching this, and you know it can fill up, but I want you to do it now. Click the link that's uh, the button that's popping up on the screen or below. See my calendar and schedule a time to talk. And, and let's just be clear about the talk, right? I don't want you to feel like, oh, is this going to be some sort of a sales pitch or whatever? This is not like that. So oftentimes when you're in the midst of what you're dealing with, the challenges that you're dealing with, a lot of times you can't even get heard. It's like sometimes you're arguing and fussing so much that even when you're talking, it's like she's already ready to give her answer before she really even heard anything that you said. She's not listening to listen. She's just listening for you to shut up so that she can say her piece. But this is not that. This is your time to speak, to really be heard where there's really somebody listening. So my goal 
with the conversation. It's, it's a coaching call. Well, I'm going to just be talking with you about how can we get clear about your vision for your marriage, for your life. How do we get clarity about your vision and then understand some of the obstacles? How can we understand some of the obstacles that are hindering your vision, the big obstacles that are hindering your vision? And then let me provide you with and let us come up together with a path and a plan so that you can achieve the vision you want. So the call is not about Brad. The call is about you. It's not about Brad's thing. It's about hearing your vision, understanding the obstacles that's hindering your vision, and then providing you with a, a path and a plan to achieve the life you want, to save your marriage. That's what this is about. So go ahead now and click the button and schedule a time to talk with me. And I want you to know I'm looking forward to this conversation. I'm looking forward to talking with you. I've enjoyed this time talking now. So go ahead and click right now and schedule the time with me. And for now, I just want to say thank you for taking time to spend with me about such a serious matter in your life. It's been my pleasure, my honor talking with you. I appreciate you. I'm looking forward to talking with you, getting clarity about your vision, understanding some of the obstacles and providing you with a path and a plan to achieve the life that you want. So until we talk, and I'm looking forward to it, I'm signing off. My name is Brad Tipton, and I've been the host of this time together. I look forward to speaking with you. But until then, bye for now.